Hi everyone, this is uh, Dr. Jamie Morano um, coming to you uh, via podcast. I'm excited to talk to you today about the um, boot camp number three, uh, Human and Immune Deficiency Virus Boot Camp, uh, our series in HIV education here at the University of South Florida uh, Morsani uh, College of Medicine. Um, this is um, U equals uh, U, uh, trying to understand this concept. Uh, I like to call it U cubed because we're understanding U equals U. And um, let's just jump right in here. Um, so many of you might have been hearing about the new trends of U equals U, which is undetectable, is untransmissible uh, or untransmittable. Um, this is um, a uh, slogan that has been uh, propagated by the International AIDS Society and uh, part of the Prevention Access Campaign. Uh, very exciting uh, development uh, to show that a person living with HIV with an undetectable HIV viral load uh, does not transmit the virus uh, to their partner. So this is kind of a uh, game changer in terms of um, HIV and hopefully reducing uh, stigma uh, even more uh, worldwide. So what is the context of U equals U? Well, um, we know that the number of new HIV infections um, has actually been decreasing thanks to the hard work of um, many, many public health people, uh, villages and uh, county health departments and academic centers and, and uh, government funding of all sorts. Um, we have been decreasing um, many of the HIV infections. You can see an increase in Eastern Europe and Central Asia for a variety of reasons, but overall we are making progress overall a decrease in 16 percent. Um, we still however have about 36.7 million persons living with HIV uh, globally so we're making progress but still uh, need to uh, do more. Um, especially the rates of new HIV diagnoses among adults and adolescents in the United States we're currently at a prevalence of 1.2 million our total incidence is about 18,000 which is down um, thanks to efforts of uh, prevention and uh, linkage to care um, wanted to point out that where we are in Florida um, used to be one of the highest it's come down uh, we still have a lot of work to do but um, certainly the, the southeast region of the United States continues to be um, kind of central ground zero for HIV infection acquisition so uh, we're all working on that that's part of this educational outreach um, the south has 53 or majority of the uh, infections the new infections of HIV each year as compared to the northeast at 17 percent um, what populations are most at risk for HIV acquisition? Uh, you can see a nice breakdown by the CDC um, of certain uh, types of um, populations. Uh, the reason why um, this is important is certainly for messaging and outreach, um, but also in the South, um, we see um, a diverse population at risk for HIV, um, but continuing to uh, message appropriately so we can uh, prevent HIV uh, further in our communities. Um, specifically, uh, you can see here we are in uh, Hillsborough, Pinellas counties. Um, we're still um, greater uh, than um, the, the state rate, so we're unfortunately a little bit above average of acquisition for HIV currently, but uh, we're working on it uh, through these types of policies, and we're working closely with other uh, county health departments to uh, coordinate uh, efforts and be consistent in our messaging and our outreach. Uh, you can see the Florida HIV trends. Um, we um, have been making progress in uh, new HIV uh, cases. Some of these are cases that have been acquired previously, just found out or discovered um, recently. Uh, you can see we've we've made some progress, but our numbers are creeping back up, but um, still working on it. You can see our MSM population is our highest risk in Florida, followed by our heterosexual populations. We have a small population of um, intravenous drug users who are at risk for HIV. Certainly that has been increasing in recent years, but as a whole in the country, we're uh, lower than, than average. Um, and you can see um, our age range of highest acquisition um, is kind of in the, the middle age uh, section here. 
Uh, Diagnosis-based model, so persons living with HIV in Florida, um, you may be aware of the HIV uh, care cascade continuum. Um, this is um, numbers from 2016 in Florida. Um, this also has a national counterpart. Um, but the important part here is you can see that of those uh, diagnosed with HIV, for example, 114,000, we're only getting to about uh, six, 60 percent um, of those diagnosed with HIV to actually have a suppressed viral load, and that's really key to you you is suppressing the HIV viral load so someone is uh, untransmittable. Um, so we certainly have uh, work to do with linkage to care, but we're getting there and a lot of our folks will be linked for a while and then uh, go out of care for a variety of reasons, either substance use or um, imprisonment or uh, homelessness and then coming back to care. So uh, we're rolling out uh, new policies, very excited about this for uh, test and treat and, and relinkage to care for retest and treat. And we're hoping to bring that linkage to care uh, number uh, up again. Uh, so this is a slide about the percentage of adult HIV infection and AIDS cases diagnosed by um, uh, diagnosed by population in Florida. Um, we do have a diverse uh, community, and um, we also have uh, groups of uh, people who are uh, more than one group. So as you can imagine, um, ethnicity and racial groups often are very artificial. Um, we have a lot of inter uh, mixing of, of groups in Florida, um, and so this gives kind of a general idea of our groups, but uh, certainly um, it, it's not um, it's not always straightforward in terms of uh, specific uh, at-risk populations. We, of course, try to be um, messaging uh, our groups as a whole. So what is the science between U equals U? Um, we have... Um, we know that uh, undetectable is an untransmittable, but I think it's important to understand that it takes about really one to six months to achieve an undetectable viral load. That said, we know the integrase inhibitors such as dilutegravir can uh, obtain a undetectable viral load um, in our pregnant women populations almost two to three weeks. It's an incredibly uh, quickly moving antiretroviral, and certainly if ART is um, taken every day consistently by the patient, we do see an undetectable viral load in uh, almost two to three weeks. But uh, if you account for reservoirs or person who's been infected for a while, uh, the NIH does recommend about six months to really maintain an undetectable viral load um, after the first undetectable test result. So after the achievement of the undetectable viral load and the maintaining of that, that's about six months to a year, uh, but there would be effectively no risk if this person is really, really consistent with ART. So um, the person really has to be uh, consistent with their ART, but that said, uh, once that's maintained, uh, then there would be very, very low risk. Um, how is this found out? Well, this is kind of an exciting story, um, th really through um, very rigorous um, NIH-sponsored uh, trials. You're familiar with the HIV Prevention Trial Network, the HPTN studies. Um, this specifically HPTN 052 by Cohen's group, University of North Carolina. Um, followed um, 1,763 heterosexual discordant couples over 10 years in nine countries. And... Um, about uh, half and half uh, men and women uh, were HIV positive, and they found a reduction of HIV transmission of almost 93% in the early ART transmission group, uh, or initiation group, rather, and uh, no link transmissions between uh, discordant couples when the HIV viral was suppressed. This is very exciting because not only did it uh, speak to the science of um, early treatment, um, but also when treatment was initiated, uh, further um, spread of the virus was stopped. This is very exciting, and this uh, really made an argument for not only the cost-benefit analysis, but the scientific benefit of starting uh, therapy early. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, birthed the concept of treatment as prevention called TASP. It's, it's written capital T, lowercase a-s, capital P, um, and it really proved the concept of early ART initiation. Um, this was also very exciting, the partner study by um, the partner study group. Uh, it had 75 clinical trials in 14 European countries. Um, also worked with serodiscordant couples, but um, really the first to integrate MSM couples. Um, and it also recorded frequency of uh, different types of uh, interactions. Uh, and it also did a phylogenetic analysis, which is very exciting, which showed uh, no intracouple uh, transmissions. Um, and this is a nice way of portraying the phylogenetics of HIV. Uh, you can do this with a lot of the viral transmissions. We've seen this done um, 
it's called a Monte Carlo um, inference. Um, you can do this with hepatitis C uh, and other uh, types of viruses to see the relationships of, of the virus, the viral strain. This was the third kind of leg of, of the U equals U stool, if you will. Um, this is the um, uh, HIV treatment, treatment prevents HIV transmission uh, in male serodiscordant couples. And this was all MSM couples. Uh, they were serodiscordant um, and actually looked at very high risk um, types of um, relationships uh, in terms of condomless anal intercourse called CLAI. Um, and this is important because this specifically addressed um, the higher risk populations and also specifically asked kind of the, the, the hard questions in terms of um, what types of behaviors um, might put people at risk for infection. Um, they did not see any linked infections, and this really kind of uh, took off in terms of the U equals U movement because this was really the population people were worried about in terms of uh, transmission. So this was also pretty exciting. Um, the NIH commentary on U equals U, so Dr. Anthony Fauci really, I, I think, heroically took this up and said, if you diligently take your medicine and keep your viral load to below detectable levels, um, you are no longer a, a danger of transmission to a partner. Um, so this goes a long way to eliminating the stigma associated with HIV. Um, so you can see the three large Mountain National Research studies. We just went over HPTN052, the partner study, and the opposite attract study uh, did not show any HIV transmission to the HIV negative partner. Uh, that's pretty exciting. And also you can see that there were uh, many, many episodes of um, exposures up to 74,000 um, with, with uh, no link transmissions that they could find. Um, so the CDC then um, felt comfortable um, once the science was in and the NIH was uh, kind of behind it um, to really send out a dear colleague letter. Um, and this was on National Gay Men's HIV AIDS Awareness Day in 2017 um, and really kind of hit the, the mainstream press um, with U equals U. Um, what is the messaging? Um, this is a pretty exciting um, public um, health campaign. Um, the U equals U consensus statement started in the AIDS Society Conference in Paris um, and um, kind of took off uh, from there. So um, this is a uh, Lancet uh, comment, but uh, U equals U is a simple but hugely important campaign based on a solid foundation of scientific evidence. Um, so it's been successful in influencing public opinion and really trying to eliminate uh, stigma and um, not worrying about uh, transmitting infection to uh, partners. Um, so the public campaigns I wanted to share with you, um, this is um, really exciting from the London Underground Tube. Um, there are many ways to prevent HIV, so kind of like a takes a village here. We have testing, uh, we have um, undetectable with ART in the red, we have condom in condoms or barrier methods, and we also have PrEP, so um, certainly a continuum of HIV uh, prevention and um, uh, departments of health, uh, academic centers, and health systems are uh, supporting all of these methods for HIV uh, prevention. Um, and the San Francisco AIDS Foundation um, does support U equals U. They also have a Getting to Zero San Francisco campaign where they integrate prevention, testing, and treatment. Um, also, Miami has now gotten a Getting to Zero campaign, and, and Florida also is very proactive. Um, these are interesting public health campaigns. Um, you are the solutions for uh, Washington, D.C. Um, also, this is uh, New York City uh, keeping healthy. Um, this is from uh, Germany. And these are the undetectables for housing. So the thought is um, getting the virus under control with ART and then um, um, for at least six months. Um, and then you're not uh, untransmittable. Um, and then you can um, go ahead and um, be, um, how do I say, be a superhero because you're uh, preventing your health and preventing the health of others. Um, this is a Russian example, so H equals uh, H or I equals I, or K equals K. This is a Vietnamese campaign. Um, these are from um, Northern Europe, N equals N. Uh, this is from Hong Kong. Uh, this is from Algeria. Uh, this is from the Czech Republic. 
and uh, this is also from either Russia or the Russia Federation. And um, this is U equals U from the AIDS map for the United States. And this is um, Paris, France. And um, this is the British HIV Medical Association. And this is the International Association of Providers of AIDS Care. And I'd like to end there. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, hopefully we've inspired you that U equals U and uh, to look at a holistic approach to getting your uh, patients uh, into care and uh, undetectable and untransmittable. Uh, thank you so much.